Woodshop. Thank God for wood. Okay. Duxbury, would you like a minute here? What do you got? Oh, I could do that. I, I think the theme to the theme for today was tool storage. Yeah, I rotate between at least three lathes, usually four or sometimes. But uh, moving your tools back and forth is a real pain in the neck. So, like yours, John, I got a I got a tool cart on the top. Is all my tools are all in a row. Um, I got dividers on one side, calipers on the other side, my face shield. In this drawer is sandpaper. This drawer is all my jigs and or adapters and things. I think I can show this side of it. Uh, this is the side of it. I have uh, my big calipers, big uh, dividers, and that sort of thing around the side. Do you have more tools than that stash somewhere, or is that your whole kit? Oh. You got to be kidding. <laughs> yes, there's a whole pile of them. This is the ones I use actively from lathe to lathe. Uh, how many How many lathes do you have and why? Five, but uh, two are my wife's and uh, three are mine. And uh, they're different sizes. Um, I don't know. They just, they all have different purposes. And uh, I like using the little ones. I use a 10 inch lathe most of the time. Because everything weighs about a tenth of what it does on the big power matic, but uh, uh, it's easier to just roll from one to another. I do eighty percent of my work on a ten-inch lathe, I think. Uh, anyway, this is the other side. These are more calipers and things. On the bottom are tool rests and adapters. In here, uh, this is the drawer. This is sandpaper. You can tell I cleaned for this shot. So these are all adapters <laughs> and different whatever. And uh, underneath is the uh, underneath is vacuum chucks, holders, and threaders, and more chucks, and all sorts of things. I'm back to a side by side gallery looking for questions for Jim. Any questions for Jim? I have a portable one too. If you want to go ahead. Looking for questions or comments. I like that stand. I'm very much in favor of rolling tool stands and vertical storage of tools. I have one for my, uh, maybe I could show this part too. This should work. Uh, Jim, I was impressed that you used uh, like furniture grade uh, finishing on your, on a shop cabinet. I saw the square button heads on the, uh, I guess, screw head covers. Yeah, they're, they're square dowels, they're square heads on it. Uh, yeah, it's made, uh, it's made right. Yeah, I don't know, can you see that? It's coming up on a different Yeah, thing. yeah, we see your tool tote. Does that fold? I, I've, I've been looking for a drawing of one of those and I've been drawing my own to try and figure that out. Now, wait a minute, I spent half a day doing this. It'll show you the whole thing, if it works, here we go. I even had to dress for this. My wife made me change clothes. There we go. Today I'd like to show my tool tote. Reed and I demonstrate all over the country. And to have your tools carried around in a five gallon bucket or one of those canvas sleeves with 287 little pockets just doesn't work. I developed this. Don't lock it here. Down, it becomes an easel. And when you open it up, all my tools are in order. This first tool is a parting tool, the next one's a point scraper, the next one's a round nose scraper. I know exactly where those are. I change tools often, so I know exactly where these things are. This is a spacer with magnets on it, just to hold things in place. Well, this is a uh, set of miniature tools, my check key, the pin for the tailstock. These are all specialized tools. This is a ring cutter, um, a little slot cutter for maybe kaleidoscopes and that sort of thing. When I do a workshop or a symposium or a demo, when I leave, 
if I see a slot in here, I know I'm missing a tool. You have no idea if you have all your tools in a five gallon bucket. These things are expensive. And not only that, they're exactly the way I want them. I can pick them up, they're all contained in here. Nobody's gonna get cut on them. There's no point sticking out of something. I travel, they lock up this way. This flips up, turn this little button, pick it up. Ready to go. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Just no end to the fun. Oh, I like that. Hey, does that, clear, does that clear airline overhead baggage compartment? Yeah. <laughs> it, it went to Hawaii and the airline stuck something right through the front of it. I, <laughs> no idea, but that that brown patch on the front of it, I have no idea what they stuck through that, but I took the handle off it and uh, put a screw right through the front so they couldn't open it <clears throat> and shipped it to Hawaii and it, it, it went it went back and forth but I, I have no idea what they can mess up anything but anyway uh, my tool storage saves me a lot of time and with both of them when I turn around I know exactly where the tool is you don't have to fuss around sorting through all the different handles and whatever okay thanks very much Jim you got it. Questions for Jim? Okay. Uh, Michael Brazo. Okay, I'll do a share screen here, guys. Go for it. And uh, this is something I put together, I don't know, almost 20 years ago. A little cabinet for all the odds and ends that's got wood dust, um, you know, fillers hey, for epoxy. You know, bits for hollowing, um, whatever. It, 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 it's a mess, or I'd take a picture of the interior. The carousel on the top, <clears throat> I've added a lot more holes to it, and I've really got probably another dozen tools that, in addition to that. But uh, I know a lot of people don't like carousels with uh, tools pointing upwards, but I've only stabbed myself a couple of times in 20 years and, and nothing dramatic. So... It's worked really well, really, really well for me. Um, Looks a little dangerous I also in the middle for those quick... tools. Yeah, well, if you go in, arc, arc in from the top, you know, it, you learn your lessons pretty quick. This <laughs> yeah. is something. Why, yeah. why wouldn't you store them the other way up with the cut edge down? I, I have actually some in the inner area that my old, some old Delta tools that I do. I just, I just prefer to be able to see them. I, oh. Because I can usually tell them from the handles, you know, and from the yeah, blade, I know what it is anyhow. Yeah, I make all my own handles too. So uh, I have a lot, through, I have a lot of tools that I've added. This picture is, is 15 years old. Okay. But um, I have one rack just for bowl gouges now. This is something I added on the back of my 2436. It's just a piece of two by eight. Uh, drill holes as needed. And as you can see, I've added some things in the back here for centers. It gets a little messy when you're turning, but it really isn't that big a deal to clean up. Um, particularly if you're doing spindle turning and it's dry wood, it's just chips. If you're you're turning green wood, of course, you get some shavings and piles on, but uh, between an air hose and plucking it off and the vacuum uh, cleans up. I just find it really, really handy um, to be able to grab stuff without having to even turn around, just reach over and there it is. So I have some other stuff, but... Um, how do I get out of this now? If I hit escape, I guess, but um, I'll stop by sharing. <clears throat> I have a write-up that if you Google Mike Brazo storage, there's a number of clubs that have got it posted on there uh, that I did years ago. I have one other stand uh, that I made now just as bull gouges, which I made, like Jim said, moving from lathe to lathe. And um, it's really become my bull gouge stand and some other odds and ends in it, but just handy. So wait a minute, are you saying you got some plans out there for a tool cabinet or something? Yeah, let me let me see if I can show you the share screen again and I'll go to the Adobe. This is how I started with this thing. So that um, it tells the story and gives you a brief description of um, of how I made it. This is how one started out. 
truck knocked over my mailbox. I had a piece of four by four. I originally had that attached to my old Delta Homecraft and I found it got in the way. So I put it on a separate stand. Now I've had quite a few things on separate stands in my shop and I find that it's a real bear to sweep up around them. I don't like them anymore. I like to have it mounted so it doesn't have any footprint. Yeah, it's um, my, my shop, my garage is a real mess right now. So I need to, I need to host the hands-on. I, I hosted several hands-on, Cindy Drozda, Bonnie Klein, uh, Doug Fisher, a few years back in the place it was all spick and span, you know, and all set up a half dozen lathes, and now it's a total disaster. <laughs> you gotta stop what you're doing for a month and clean it up. <laughs> anyway. Okay, is that it from you? Yeah. Okay. Who else we got next here? Um, just okay, Bert. What do you have? I'm muting myself here. Okay, I'm unmuted. I was just going to share a screen, and. Can you see my uh, my what? Can you see my um, yeah. air cleaner? Okay, that's my shop, and that's uh, the most recent addition to my shop is a two horsepower air cleaner. It completely changes all the air in my shop every three minutes. I've got a twenty four by twenty four shop, and it's only two horsepower. And I was on a Zoom call with that thing running, and nobody could hear it. It's that, uh, an amazing piece of equipment. Is that one of those it's Oneida just, things? Uh, well, it's uh, it, it's got a, a cyclone. It's not Oneida. It's I uh, bought it from Canadian Woodworker. I forget um, the exact name on it, but uh, it's uh, definitely uh, the cyclones are definitely worth uh, the effort. And I hard plumbed it into the shop, so it's hanging from the ceiling, six inch at the lathes, four inch for everything else. And I leave a six inch and a four inch open all the time. Uh, there's a six inch on the lathe is always open, and one of the other four inches. And I found that that is uh, uh, making the filter do what it's supposed to do. The filter sees 1,500 cubic feet a minute all the time, and it works like a charm. And we were talking about tools. Well, there's my uh, latest tool rack. Uh, I've got uh, um, beside my lathe, it's on wheels, so I can wheel it around, and all my uh, calipers and stuff are hanging below, and my Allen wrenches are in drilled holes. Uh, I have so many tools that I ended up putting a an extra bench in there with a hinge on it so I can just open it up and there's a second rack of tools. And if I go on, the other, on the other side of the same rack, I uh, wanted to put more tools. So I put a, a third rack on and I found an extra pair of hinges. So I ended up putting a fourth rack on. So I, uh, there's 40 <laughs> tools standing there. I don't use them all the time, but what I really found is that now that they're not in a drawer and they're right there available, I can see them. I'm starting to use some of the tools that I would never, never have taken the time to go look for. And um, it's just a convenience thing. And I mean, that's the result of me spending that time in Sheffield. Every time I came home from Sheffield, I had another handful of Henry Taylor tools in my suitcase. So I, I ended up buying all my tools before I retired. So I, I've got just about every piece of steel I think I'll ever need. And, uh, and it works great. And uh, all, the, all the points are pointing up, so I don't have to worry about anybody walking through the shop and getting stabbed. And if I need an inside one, I just open the door and it's there. That's all I got. All right. Any questions for Bert? It looked like yeah. in your first slide, you have the cyclone hooked up to your grinder. Is that right? Uh, I have a, a, let's see, that was the first one here or the second picture? Uh, I've got a four inch drop down uh, that goes uh, directly to my bandsaw. And then the one that's hanging right beside it, it's, it, it's just kind of a loop. I use that for my uh, thickness sander. And uh, I thought about the uh, grinder, uh, but the grinder doesn't have anything connected to it. So um, yeah, it doesn't pull any sparks. Well, they're CBN, so there's very few sparks anyhow, but no, I don't have a, a hose connected to the grinder. No, I think that's it's good that you don't. It's uh, scary to hook one up to a grinder, even with the yeah. CBN wheels. It only takes a spark to. Uh, that's correct. But, yeah. but, but but what about all that metal dust in the air? Oh, uh, there's very little metal dust off of CBN because you only spend like ten seconds. Uh, it's amazing how little time I spend at the grinder now that I've got CBNs. Well, I have magnets on my CBN, and it's amazing how much metal filings collects on the magnets, and it makes me wonder how much more is getting into the air that's not on the magnets. Ah, good point. I always thought metal was heavier than wood, so it wouldn't float. It would uh, go down. Yeah. Would help you. That dust is awfully fine. I, I, I've been worrying about that. 
Oh, okay. Uh, I Good wonder point. if anybody has any information. No, I don't know the answer to that too, but it does seem to settle very quickly. I, I think it is heavy. No dust collector is a respirator. You've got to wear a respirator if you want to protect your lungs. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. I like the magnet idea. That's. Yeah, magnets help. They get a lot of, they collect a lot of it. They really do. I have a bowl about this big full of uh, magnet dust, the magnet powder on. Uh, yeah. You look at that what magnet. Size magnet? Couple of months, it looks like a softball. It looks like a tennis ball. What size magnet, John? John? Uh, whatever I can find to fit down in there, I buy those rare earth magnets. I get little rectangular ones that are about the size of a, a little square of chocolate with a screw hole in them and screw them on wherever I think there's dust coming off. I have a shroud around the grinder as well, so I'm really trying to catch that metal dust before it gets into my air. Hmm. But I also like Duxbury's idea of running uh, the, the grinder backwards with CBN and just kind of stroking the tool. I think that don't make much dust. I love that. I, I never, once I've shaped my tool, I never turn the grinder around. I always hone it. I'm going to look into that. I'm going to play with that some more. Um, okay, I've got a couple more hands here. And I know Don Smith has been Jones and share for a while. So Don, and I know that we got it worked out this morning. So Don, would you like to go for it? Well, try it, see how it goes. <clears throat> he got it to work an hour ago. Are we there? Not yet. There we are. You're there. Yep. Talk to us. Well, this is my lathe, my workshop. As you can see, my tool rack is on the corner of the wall and a magnet with very small parting tools. I have an air filter and a security light over the top of the lathe. You can't see it, but on the right hand side at the bottom here, I have other magnets which contain all my calipers. Behind what, me is the covers with all my chucks and what have you. What kind of lathe is that? That's a Paulwood 2840. I bought it in 1984. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it's still going. And the reason I wanted to show you that. There's my bandsaw, my pillar drill. I have a sander and a router and a chop saw and my wood store is on the left here. This is my grinder with a homemade grinding jig, which again, I made back in 1984. The piece here is movable and takes the bowl gouges and what you have, and you set them up with a two inch gap. And then you've got a ball here, there's a ball on the end, or there's another one of these I made that you can use with a point in this V shape. You've got two handles. This one here lets this piece come in and out. And then there's this one here, which allows this piece to come in and out. So because I'm against the wall, I can extend this to the full length of a roughing gouge. Nice. So and those are uh, stone wheels, not CBN I'm seeing. That's right. I've never gone that line. Um, getting towards the end of my running career, so I've stayed with what I've got. Now wood shop. Thank God for wood. <laughs>